I, for, I forgot to ask. Do you want cookies? Yes! I do there, want that. The one chocolate chip and one oatmeal raisin. I mean, there's one chocolate chip, two oatmeal raisin. I'm, I'm not having the oatmeal raisin. Oh, the raisins are good. No, hear me raisins out. They're actually the really good. Because the raisins are actually a little bit sweet. And there's actually flavor to it. Because that's the problem. The raisins always taste gross. And the cookie doesn't that's have any flavor. But the gross. raisins are a little sweet. And the... Like, there's, like, you can taste, like, the cinnamoniness, and, like, there's actual flavor, and they're actually really fucking good. Like, I'm being so for cereal right now. Okay, good for you. I still won't eat them, because I hate raisins. Why do I have an email from you? What is on my phone? Important things. Important, important business. Ooh, I like those. Those are pretty. Okay. Let me mark Thank those, you. star those, so I remember those. Okay, um, all right, ready to start this shit? Hello, welcome to Official Fire Podcast. I love how I asked that and then just moved on and didn't wait for an answer. I <laughs> didn't hear what you said. I said, you ready for this? And then it immediately started the intro. Um, I'm Flower AK Rose, my fun fact. I, t- I was big girl, took my pain meds this morning. So proud. Um, my prescription pain meds this morning, and part of them is that you're supposed to take them with food, right? Um, and so I, I've been doing this thing recently anyways, because I've been having migraines a lot, so I take an ibuprofen first thing in the morning, um, and then, to, because, like, it works better if you have food, cough, cough, I've been having toast with peanut butter almost every morning for the past, like, two weeks. Imagine that, me having fucking breakfast. Um, so I made toast and peanut butter again. Um, I had toasted peanut butter again for breakfast, and I went to put the, the butter knife from putting the peanut butter on the toast into the dishwasher, and my hair was just hanging there, and guess who got peanut butter in the ends of her hair the first thing this morning? You know, her hair that she washed yesterday. <laughs> so now my <laughs> hair smells no, like peanut butter. I laughed, I pointed at my phone like I was pointing and laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> my hair, the ends of my hair on one side smell like peanut butter now, so that's my Ew. life. Your bed know. smells like coffee, your hair smells like my peanut butter. My bed does not smell like coffee anymore. I cleaned it yesterday. Thank you very I much. Wash my sheets, but... I almost messaged you at like 11.30pm when I went to bed last night. Is, sex is cool, but have you ever tried coming into bed, freshly cleaned bed after taking a shower? <laughs> Yes, I've done that. Thank you. Um, yeah, and no. shaved legs on top of that. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. Anyways, it was very nice. I very. It was just. I had a very good night's sleep. I mean, if you ignore the cramps. Um. <laughs> but it was very I comfy. Uh, I don't know. It was well. Do your intro. Uh, my name is Fish, aka Stingray, and. Let's play a game okay. called How Much of This Episode Am I Going to Dissociate Through? Um, I'm going to guess 90%. Me too. Because this is Good a book I you know nothing shrunk. about, you care nothing about. <laughs> Good thing I get my head shrunk this month. Maybe it'll help. I don't think it will, but. Gotta make it smaller. <laughs> yeah. I apologize for myself. Um, this is a stream of conscious podcast, very similar to how we talk to each other on a daily basis on today's episode. Um, we have That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. Um, funny story about this book. This was a book that I knew in my head, like it wasn't on my TBR or anything, but I knew in my head that I wanted to do it for this podcast at some point, right? Um, and then about three months ago, Bestie texted me about this book because, um, she occasionally texts the person who was our next door neighbor, um, when we were roommates, right? And, uh, she read this book. And Bestie saw this book and went, that would be hilarious and perfect for you. Because, you know, she knows I'm the type of person who reads Dino Smut. So, she went, this yeah. is a Rose-type book. And I went, you saw, oh, right? Yeah. It's already played for the podcast at some point. Um, and here we are now. I have read it. I did rate I've it four stars. This one is actually really pretty. I know, right? Um, it's gorgeous. Um, I did rate this four stars. I am gonna continue this series. This gives me the vibes. The series, Jesus Christ. I know, right? I'm in the middle of 73 now. Remember last month when I was at 69? 
and we were so proud. Oh, I'm like in the middle of a, like less than ten series. I know my sister's the same way. She's also under ten. She's about because to finish another one. Normal. <laughs> Hear me out. Your sister is the most normal person we know. <gasps> Which is so wild. Um. Anyways, this book is what I imagine cozy fantasy. Like um. Uh, taverns and lattes. What is that? You know what I'm talking about, that book. Legends and Lattes. Legends and Lattes. There we go. It's what I imagine that's like. I feel like you would like Legends and Lattes. Uh, it's on my TBR. Uh, and Smut was combined into a book. That's what this is. Um, You want to guess how many pages of notes I took? I'm feeling a solid seven. Two and a half. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm very proud of myself. Also, I read most of this in one sitting. <laughs> um, so... Every time I shoot high, it's always low, and when I shoot low, it's always high, lately. See, one all my game is fucked up. Because I used to be able to guess it so closely, that's how you know I'm fucked up, when I can't guess how many pages of notes you've taken. Haven't you noticed that the last few months I haven't been able to guess it correctly at all when I used to do it perfectly before? That's how you know I'm fucked up. <laughs> okay. Um, content warnings. I'm being so serious. We, uh, we have content warnings. Oh, um, another thing about this book, we love her. Um, she put, um, before, like, the book starts, like, you know, when you have, like, the, like, title page and all that stuff, right, and the copyright page and all of that fun stuff, um, she had a content warning page. Yeah. So I know what they are without having to look them up on StoryGraph, but I will say them anyways, look at them on StoryGraph, but, um, we have sexual content, violence, blood, slavery, death, gore, um, child death, and then mentioned, but not, like, actually talked about in detail or happening on page is rape and sexual harassment. You know. And I fun. would like to know, I did tell you about this and how he does kill them, and, I mean, I'm kind of into it. Where's my demon dick? Oh my god, girl. <laughs> I was making... Um... I was making jokes that I was going to summon a demon after reading this book to friends. And they were like, well, no, you, we never demon, saw Rose again. Call me. To I summon know, I a demon, all you have to do is call me. Um, also, if I were to ever publish a book, I would put the war content warnings in the beginning. Yes. Wow. Of course, the good old conversation of, like, content warnings are pointless. Why would we need content warnings? Blah, 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 um, is happening again on the internet. That happens, hey. like, every six months. Team Katie Robert, hey. who's all like, bitch, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but much nicer whenever this happens. Well, I'm not going to be nice. To anyone, hello, hello. I'm speaking to anyone who thinks content warnings aren't important. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, Thank you. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um... Okay, uh, your book, book. Uh, the first thing I wrote down in my notes is first highlight, so let me pull up my first highlight. This is literally the first sentence of this book. Okay? Yeah, I think you told me what it was, but I don't remember. And I quote, I had only two things on my mind. Cheese and how to get home. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, so, background lore, every 15 years, a doorway to the other realm where demons are from or live, um, weakens, and, uh, when that 15 years happens, the god Maiva chooses four people, uh, to help defeat the demons on the border. Usually one of them is chosen from this village. Um, Maiva has a magical force field around the town because it's pretty close to the, like, kind of close to the border. Not too close, but kind of close. Uh, so demons can't get in. Um, and the whole village is celebrating the recent chosen, uh, because, named Priscilla, because nobody fucking liked her. So they're all like, hell yeah, we got to kick her out. Um, like, there's this whole thing where she has a conversation with the blacksmith who, uh, complains that for, like, three months after she was chosen, Priscilla was, like, very, um, adamant about him making her the perfect pink sword. And he was like, fucking kill me. <laughs> well, um... And while I get his point of view, also you get to see her with her pink sword, and it, like, it matches her outfit perfectly, and I'm like, I kind of get it, though. That sounds like something I would do in, like, a video game, so. Um, you know, if, if, if we were in this situation somehow, I would be picked to be sacrificed or whatever um, going on here. Speaking of that, uh, the main character, named Cinnamon, Sin for short, um, does not, is not a big fan. 
of this whole thing. She does not want to be picked. Um, I don't put it in my notes, but her and her best friend, uh, shortly before the whole choosing ceremony, dyed their hair pink to uh, limit their chances of being picked, because normally you have to be very attracted to be picked. So she, like, purposely makes it so she doesn't, like, she, like, wears um, old clothing and basic browns and all this stuff so that she doesn't look attractive, so that she's not chosen. Um, cause she doesn't- while well, everyone's big into wanting to be chosen. Not the, Uh, they're big to- There's something wrong in my head. Um, they want to be chosen, right? Uh, because, like, big adventures and getting to be the hero. She's all like, I'd rather not fucking die. Um, and I quote, Biceps were nice, but so was not having my guts eaten by an orc. Yeah. Um, so Cinnamon's best friend is the cheesemaker, uh, whose name is Bree. Um, mm -hmm. and Cinnamon's, uh, family's whole thing is they're spice farmers. Uh, specifically, uh, I should mention her name, Cinnamon Hot Pepper, and, uh, her family works specifically in Cinnamon. And her name's Cinnamon. She also has, um, I think, Cumin and Chili as her brothers. You know... Um, so she's hanging out with Bree, eating some cheese. There's a large boom near Sin's family farm. Um, and goes to walk home when one of the fisherman's boys, uh, dressed as a bandit, tries to rob her. Uh, she just laughs him off and chases him through the woods, uh, and loses him, but finds, uh, the avalanche caused by the boom. And she avalanche. hears- Avalanche. Avalanche! And hears someone <laughs> stuck in it. So she goes to help him out, and immediately his eyes start growing yellow and- glowing yellow, and he grows horns, and he tries to choke her out as oh. he tells her to run. Oh. Oh. Yep, she escapes, uh, he, she's, like, trying to escape through the cinnamon fields because it's basically a maze, um, uh, but he eventually finds her, tackles her, but she whacks him in the head with the branch of the cinnamon, and, uh, so then he's, like, trying to get cinnamon out of his nose, and while he's distracted, she runs into her parents' home, um, and her parents wake up and just think she's really drunk. Uh, though in the morning, her dad is still slightly suspicious about this and plans a trip to Maiva's temple, um, uh, right, to pray for safety and all this stuff, uh, we learn at this point Sin had a younger sister named Cherry who's dead. Uh, oh. By demons. Um, hmm. It's cute family time around the breakfast table when the demon... Uh, yeah, no, literally one of her brothers is like, where's this demon you told us about? And then at the window, Fallon, Fallon the demon from last night, is there and he's like, we're here. <laughs> I can just imagine him standing outside the window listening in the house, just like, just like, just like, just, just, hold on, hold on, hold on, just, just standing Buffering. there, just standing there like this. <laughs> oh like my this. god. Like, oh yeah, this, this, this. yeah, that's accurate, that's accurate, actually. Um, also, I would like to know, when she first rescued him, um, from the avalanche, uh, he did sniff her wrist, that it will be important later. Um, so, yeah, he just enters the house. Um, he is seven feet tall. Uh, he says he oh. needs Sin, uh, help, which causes her older brother to try and fight him. Um, but Fallon just throws him across the room and is like, nah, 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 shut the fuck up. Um, third highlight, okay. Um, she, uh, yells at him that you tried to kill me last night when he's all like, I need your help. Um, and he says, semantics and shrugs. That's, that's the thing that happens between them a lot. Um, uh... So Fallon explains that Maiva isn't actually a god, but a lich, which is an undead sorcerer who specializes in necromancy. She made the demons, uh, crazy by, like, mind control a long time ago by s oh, no, she made them mad. They ma she made them angry a long time ago by sacrificing a few of their kids to become more powerful, and so because of that new power, she can mind control the demons and, um, make them crazy and kill most of them off and made the gate so like this every 15 years the gate weekends and we gotta send people to go defeat them and usually they die um it's just her like watching them have fun um uh, yeah um which is funny because i forgot to bring up cinnamon does when we learn that like usually the people that are sent to take care of the demons are like very attractive cinnamon's like it's almost like she just wants to watch pretty people fight demons um yeah um so when she whacked him with a cinnamon stick, it stopped the mind control, um, and he can't- but he can't get to Maiva's temple to destroy her heart and kill her, because the magic is too strong, it was making him be mind controlled again, right? So he, um, 
he goes to, he's like, Cinnamon, here's an animal that will show Maiba's true form. Um, and then once you see her true form and understand the truth of this, destroy her heart, which is this chalice. Uh, and then once that's done, I will claim the village so that no demons will attack the village and also specifically keep your family safe. Right? Um, and says that she'll be in no danger at all this stuff. And she agrees. Right? Um, so when she starts to break the, uh, the chalice thing, uh, a skeleton hand comes out and attacks her. And then a whole undead ogre attacks her. Um, Fallon saves her, and she breaks the goblet chalice thing, um, and then the temple starts to collapse, so she pushes them out of the way, uh, he holds her, and she's into it, she's like, cool, bye, my guy, um, now you may be like, hey, wait a second, this is, like, really fucking fast, what are you talking about, this is, like, chapter four, and the quest is already done, like, what are you talking about, um, yeah, she's like, good luck on the three other temples, and he's all like, fucking hell, um, and half-heartedly threatens her friends if she doesn't help with the three other temples, so they're off on adventure. Um, they, uh, rest for the night, and then the next morning, they have a fight over how much she packs. Uh, when he storms off, Bria and Cinnamon talk about how hot he is. Um, the only other time Cinnamon left the border of the village is when Cherry died, changing her view on heroism and adventure forever. Um, the whole entire reason she was beyond the border was her drive for adventure and being a hero. Uh, and so... Then her sister dies because of it, and so she like, changes her view of it. And then her lack of adventure after seeing her younger sister die is why her ex left her. He was all like, you changed, and then leave. I know, right? Um, so Bree goes with her to the border, uh, where she's supposed to meet Fallon. But the young bandit from the, night, the other night, right, um, him and his older brother uh, corners her and tries to attack her. Um... She, like, throws apples at his head. <laughs> right? Um, but he eventually gets to her and, like, punches her, right? Um, when Fallon comes up and breaks his arm and is in the process of stabbing him with his sword in the shoulder with Cinnamon tries to explain, you can't just kill people. It's a good old who hurt you is nothing. It's not nothing to me scene, you know? Uh-huh. One of those You scenes. know, I think it would be really fun to throw apples at somebody said. She does that at another point, too. Um, road trip time! So, uh, it's basically a lot of cute bantering and cuddling and food porn. Her cooking him food and him being, like, obsessed with all the food she makes and all the stuff, right? Um, and, like, flavorful foods are, like, an important part thing to her, so, like, that's a whole thing. Um, the creature that killed Cherry pretends to be her and attempts to kill, um, Cinnamon. And Fallon saves her. And carries her back to the camp. Because she she went into the bog when it happened. So she's like freezing cold. Right? And holds her as she cries for her sister. He's just like, it's okay, just cry. Um, as she sobs into him. And then uh, she bathes herself. But he joins and washes her hair for her. Uh, and, then, and it's being all hot listen, and sexy. If you say they wash the other person's hair. I'm gone. Like, I can't. I eat that shit up. Okay, so um, it, it's being all hot and sexy. And he's all like making comments about how he could eat her out and he's all like, I could eat you and she's like, you know what else we could eat? And then stabs a gator. That's in the water. Easily. Easily. She ah. like just easily bodies a gator. She's like, gator jerky. And he's so enamored, enamored by this. He sees her body this gator. What the fuck? Me too. She's like trying to drag that gator back to the campfire and he saw this all and he's just like, oh my god. Gets out of the water, walks her, throws the gator's body up to the campfire so, like, she doesn't have to, like, drag it, right? And declares he will marry her before this adventure is over. Like, I, I thought he was walking towards her to, like, kiss her or something. Like, it's gonna be a hot makeout session. No, he walks up to her, throws the gator, goes, after this is over, he will be my wife. And then kisses her on the cheek. I agree. And then moves on. And I was like, okay, okay, I see it. Um, I get it. I did the same thing. What are you talking about? I don't think I put it in my notes, but he is described as having narrow hips. That's not important. Uh, I just want to bring that up. You try to cover this demon got a slutty waist. <laughs> <laughs> um, he explains when they're married, uh, 
he'd mark her by biting her and giving her some of his magic, which will act as an aphrodisiac and cause a week-long, weeks-long honeymoon phase, in quotes, of constant banging. Um, when she's all, I'm excuse sorry. Me. <laughs> yeah, when she's all, excuse me, we are not married, nor have I agreed to it. He says he wouldn't do it yet because she deserves more than senseless banging on the deadly forest floor. Um, and then they get jumped by four men. Uh, uh, um, they're like right outside the city. Uh, and they're all being all creepy. Oh, the leader's all like, ooh, you should share some time with her, all that type of stuff, right? Um, and so her horse beats him up. This is not a lie. What the fuck is this horse? I really thought the horse was gonna be like secretly a human in a horse body, like demon creature. It's not. But one of her horses does kill him. Um, and then Fallon gets all punchy punchy when the other bandits make uh, a rape joke about Sin, um, Cinnamon. And one of them is about to throw a spear at Fallon, which could cause damage, right? Um, as he's like beating one of the other bandits with the other bandit. Like, she's, he's beating one bandit with the other bandit. He has. <laughs> and his back's you know. So she shoots one of them with her bow and arrow. Um, he feels and ashamed. She's got a bow and arrow? Uh-huh. Listen, I'm about to fight this demon for her. What are we on about? <laughs> he feels ashamed for killing one of them, and she comforts him. She tells him it's okay to kill rapists, and actually, please do. Um, parentheses, I love being represented in media. <laughs> um, and so he's happy now. Oh, God, I gotta count highlights. Seventh one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Um... Better to play along with an anger man who could beat up another man with another man. <laughs> um, that sounds so unserious. I know, I right? I love it here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, he makes a deal that if he earns 1,000 points, she'll marry him. And then it's like five pages. He like pulls her into his lap and he's just like kissing up and down her neck as he's describing for five pages straight every carnal thing he wants to do to her. That's like, their first kiss just happened. Two seconds ago. And he's, like, describing all this shit. Um, and she freaks out because she's about to bang a demon and tells him to stop. Um, parallel of humans being all rapey, but a demon stopping immediately when asked no matter how hot and bothered he is. Hmm. I see what you did there. Don't you love when demons are demons, but they still have standards mm -hmm. and morals? I see what you did there, Kimberly. I see. I see. I spot it. Um... In the city where the next child is, they uh, keep demons as slaves. Um, so uh, she befriends a human named Ursa, who she explains all this to, and she's like, "Okay, I will help you out." Um, and then while her and Fallon are set everything up uh, to destroy that chalice, um, she saves a werewolf and a naga. Um, the Naga is Ambrose, and the werewolf is Felix. I did not write down their names. That was just from my brain. I'm being so fucking proud. <laughs> um, I am surprised. There, I don't mention it here, but there is a later point where Ambrose helps Ursa out with this guy who, like, makes a bunch of fat comments about her. And so he, like, throws her in- throws the other guy into the ocean. Oh, yeah. And oh. protects her, and, like, it's, like, it hinted at them being a thing together. But as far as I can tell, none of the later books are about them, and I'm very sad about this. But the second book is Felix, who is lactose intolerant, and Brie. Oh. The cheese woman <laughs> and the lactose intolerant werewolf. Of course I need to read it. That sounds like something I would read. Yeah. Um, basically, I went and destroyed the cup, but uh, Cinnamon is hurt by the mages, uh, which makes Fallon mad. So he goes into his full mood. Or full mood. Full mode. Which is a dragon. And burns the city to the ground. Yes, I am right. This dragon romance. Dragon smut. Anyways. Um, also, uh, Ursa has a pet hyena named Kiki. And I thought you'd like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, during that fight, uh, Cinnamon's horses can now fly, uh, cause the mages dropped a bunch of flying potions, and so now her horses have wings. And then the, uh, all the, the Ursa, Felix, Ambrose, and 
all the newly freed um, demon slaves uh, work together to steal a boat. Um, and so they're demon pirates. <laughs> that is a phrase used multiple times. Um, Post battle, uh, so Fallon is like exhausted. Part of being a dragon uh, is if you go full dragon mode, it's exhausting, right? So he's very tired. Um, he takes her into like the nicest place in the city, um, and so that he can, uh, sh so that she can bathe, right? Um, and she does, and then he climbs in with her, and um, uh. Like, she washes his hair for him this time, because he's so tired, um, and then, uh, he's all like, listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go all the way with you until you agree to be my mate, my wife, but I will get you off, right? Um, uh, but, he, like, it, it gets a little kinky, he does tie up her wrist with, like, uh, a blanket, right? Uh, but he's all like, if you want me to stop, just say stop, um, like, tell me, do you want this? Do you want to be with me right now? And she nods, and he's all like, no, I need you to say it, and she says yes, and it's just like this very nice consent scene, you know, I just uh, lamented that there's a very nice consent scene. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done with these notes. Wow. Um, all the other demons call her Mrs. Dragon. <laughs> um, Cinnamon and Ursa have been voted as co-captains by the demons, the only other female on board is a centaur named uh, Holly, who is a lesbian. Oh, we have no. our lesbian representation in a centaur. I don't know how I feel about that. What's, what's the better lesbian representation, a centaur or a fish? A centaur. Wow! Wow! Well, it's I see how it is. Um, also, Felix Why calls himself so Cinnamon's new best friend as, like, like her and the other woman are uh, or having a whole conversation about her relationship with Fallon, right? And Felix is just there, and they're like, leave, Felix, this is girl time. And he's like, well, I'm her new best friend. As the first demon she rescued, uh, I call myself her new best friend. And uh, it's kind of funny, because Bree is also her best friend, and they, in the next book, so. Um, so the three of them give her a pep talk to tell Fallon her feelings, and uh, she goes to do it, and then chickens out, asks him if he wants any partridge, and then drinks her way her feelings, blacks out, and wakes up in bed with Fallon, cuddling. Um, and all the cheese on board is in their bed. Because she has I... declared herself in her blackoutness. She declared herself the cheese queen. I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, he uses his dragon magic to cure her hangover. Um, and then they're in bed, and she's all like, what if you don't need a thousand points? And he's all like, wait, what? And she's like, I think I kind of love you. And he's like, he's immediately just up like, oh my god, you better be serious. And she's like, I'm serious, I love you, bite me. And so they do the bait bite thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, also, while this is happening, all the other demons are attacking a cargo ship, right? Uh, and so they, um, they, yeah, he does the mate bite thing. She has some of his magic now. And, uh, then she's all, like, ready to go to Pound Town because the whole, um, Ambrosia thing. And, and he's all like, yes, but I've had to wait for you this whole time. So I, you, you I'm gonna, I'm gonna tease you by making you wait. And I'm gonna go help out the crew. Um, she's like, fuck you. Um, gets up above, uh, on top of the ship and goes to help out as well. And then she realizes, oh shit, it's a trap. Um, by my, the, my, my, and, um. Fallon, in dragon form, has to fight another dragon that's, like, 700 years old, like, seven times his age. Um, and the third chalice is attached to the silver dragon, the other dragon's hair. So she, there's, like, this whole thing there where she's taking her flying horse above and, uh, jumping onto him and then taking the chalice and breaking it. Um, and then, because the dragons tire out easily, um, they both crash land with her, uh, and the horse, um, on this random island. Uh, and both the dragons immediately turn human and pass out. Um, and then, uh, uh, the, the Fowler wakes up, and he takes her to a waterfall, and the bang. That's the whole chapter. That's the whole next chapter. It's just them banging for a whole chapter. Right afterwards, she's like, oh my god, what about babies? <laughs> and he's all like, don't worry, I already did a rune to make it so you can't get pregnant. <laughs> don't worry. I already did the rune on myself. It's fine. 
I wasn't gonna do that without having a conversation first. Like, damn. So, you know, just so you know, I do love this demon. That's a dragon. Um, uh, Maiva is gathering up all the demons at once to protect her, her last heart, so they gotta go immediately so that, like, it's, if the sooner they get there, the less demons they'll have to fight, right? Um, the hero crew, the four heroes, um, that Maiva gathers every 15 years is there to protect her, which includes Priscilla, but also Cinnamon's ex, oh. who still calls her sweetheart and uh -huh. his woman literally he calls her sweetie yeah. and sweetheart and fallon in dragon mode is like bitch what the fuck you talking about and he's all like well this is my woman and fallon in dragon mode is like bitch what the fuck you talking about and tries to burn him alive but they have a baby who's like protecting him and all this stuff and um yeah it pisses him off but cinnamon is also pissed she's like that's just my ex i don't know what the fuck he's talking about and he's all like we can be back together babe Right? Um, and Priscilla's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, oh, hi, guys. Um, I'm here. This is my dragon husband, Fallon. And, <laughs> right? Um, and we're here to stop the goddess Maiva, because she's not actually a goddess. She's actually evil. They don't believe her. Um, she has to shoot the mage so that, um, Fallon can, uh, fight the heroes while she goes in and breaks the chalice. Um, so that's what happens. Um, also, uh, it was mentioned earlier that it will take years for her to be able to control it, but Cinnamon will be able to use Fallon's magic, um, fire magic. But also, each demon has a specific elemental thing that they can do, and his is shadow magic. So she'll also be able to do shadow magic, and almost immediately she can like see through his shadows, um, and she starts being able to control the shadow magic already, um, which is really fast. That's weird. Um, I the whole thing is overweight the bay. I don't know what we're on about. <laughs> Eventually, she breaks the chalice, um, and then uh, she's hurt slightly, and Fallon gets angry because Maiva hurt her, so he kills Maiva. Um, and uh, her ex and Priscilla. Oh, also at one point he does rip off Fallon rips off uh, her ex's arm. Um, for calling uh her his woman. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, so they see. Maiva there, Maiva's true form, which is very disgusting. I have not described it, it is, is she's an undead creature. It's very fucking disgusting, right? Um, and so they're like, oh my god, you're right. Um, take her outside, help her out, right? Because she's slightly hurt. Um, and the other hero, the one that she didn't shoot, who's another guy, um, right, tries to stab her a few times. She hits ah. him, yep, she hits him with an apple a few times, and then Fallon, uh, as he's about to come towards her again, Fallon just comes up behind him and cuts him in half. Um, he's all ready to burn uh, her ex and Priscilla alive, but she's standing in the way. Um, and so uh, Fallon gets sick of it and magically puts her to sleep for a few days. With the magic he stole from Maiva when killing her, um, while she's asleep, he takes her back to that island that Crash landed on. Built her a beautiful shack and a home and whatever, um, and whatnot. And she's like, oh my god, did they, you kill them when she wakes up? And she's like, oh my god, did you kill them? And he's like, nah, I just decided not to. I decided you were right. Um, I just didn't wake you up because I didn't want you to see how angry I was, right? Um, and scare you. Uh, and then she's like, oh, you're not gonna let me leave this island, are you? Like, you're gonna make me stay here forever. And he's like, it's the only place I can protect you. And she's like, uh-huh, sure, Jan. Um... And she's like, what if I learn how to use my magic? What if this? What is that? And he's all like, no, 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 no. You must stay here with me forever. Um, I could never survive it if you died. Something happened to you, right? Um, and also, I think this is when he mentions that from the very beginning, he knew that she was his mate. Um, dragged no by scent, which is why she saves him and he sniffs her wrist. Uh, that's very important because that's from that moment. He knew that she was his mate. Uh, he was just giving her time, and she's like, damn, it's a real shame you didn't tell me earlier, because then it, you would have saved time. And he's like, wait, what, really? And she's like, yeah, 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 because then, like, it would have just been a few days before I fucking banged you, because then I wouldn't have been worrying about you leaving me, inevitably, if I knew that. And he's all like, god damn it. 
Um, but she's all like, hey, um, big dum dum, uh, you do realize you have Mibus magic, and Mibus was building force fields, so you could just like make it so if anybody tries to attack me, they can't with the necklace. And he's all like, shit, you right. It'll probably take me a few months to learn how to do that. So I guess we gotta have a three month honeymoon on this island as I figure that out. Um, and then uh, they bang some more. Um, and then, uh, they return, it's like a few months later, and they return to her family home, and she has the necklace amulet thing. Um, and, uh, she's like, hey guys, I saved the world, also, I married a dragon demon, and her dad's like, what? <laughs> and that's the end. Mm. There's a bunch of other stuff, like, uh, him, her saying that, uh, she always wanted to, like, have, like, a normal, boring life with, like, a cat and all this stuff. And he's all like, I could have a cat. <laughs> um, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, that, that's basically the plot. Um, it's cute. Um, a lot of him, uh, falling first and harder. And then her realizing, oh shit, I do like him. And that's that. Also, him just... Occasionally killing people for hurting her. Fun times. That's it. That's the whole book. I rated it four stars. It was really good. I will read the sequels. I do not care. Um, thing stuff. How much did you dissociate? Did I get it right? Was it 90%? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. I'm sorry. There's issues in my head. I can't help it. It's fine. I guess you'll never hear about other things. I don't know. I got the majority of it, I think. <laughs> Eminem made me something special. Well, could he not? Thanks, Spotify. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you know those ads Spotify sends on the yes, email? Yes, but Eminem? I know, I don't even listen to them. You know what it is? It's that stupid playlist that um, everyone adds music to, and then the whole friend group does, that has like over a thousand songs. There's some Eminem in there, so occasionally I'll, like, an Eminem song will come on. And so now Spotify thinks I like Eminem. I don't. I purposely switched to Dan and Phil's music so that I don't have to fucking deal with that. Fantasy Island is my favorite song by Dana Phil Beats. Thank you very much. I... Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't know this. My brain... Your brain no work? Yeah. That's okay. My brain will work enough for both of us to finish this episode. Um, I'm excited for the werewolf one. And then I think the third one, I don't know who it's about, but also has dragons... And there's two dragons. And then there may be a fourth one coming out at some point. I don't know. Goodreads says there's not, but Storygraph says there is. So I don't know about that one. Um, well, I think Storygraph is a little more on things than Goodreads. So. And then uh, she's starting a new series. So Did I also tell you that this, these were originally um, self-published, but they were picked up by, I think it was... Harper Collins. It was picked up by Orbit, which I think is Harper Collins. Something like that. Um, but yeah, no, it was initially self-published, but it was picked up, and that's what the new covers. The cover that you see is the new cover from that. The fact that it was picked up is kind of crazy, though. I know. It got really popular. Um, I mean, valid, because it's a fucking good book. I had a good time. I believe you. Um, yeah, it's over 38,000 reads on good reads so you know it says underneath it readers also enjoyed and then it's the um sequel to uh legends and lattes so mm -hmm. but yeah um it, it's just a fun book. It's, like, really fun. I didn't talk much about the food aspect. There's a lot about food that's really fun. It's very funny. Um, their banter is really cute. Um, and... I love banter. And, um, they washed each other's hair. And... He, uh, kills people for her. Um, when they are, uh, harmful towards her. And I love that. You know... 
I think it's a little fish phobic that I don't have anyone to wash my hair. <laughs> um, and that's that's the book. Oh, the library has done. Hey, wait a second. I think I own this one. I think I got it for a low, low price of zero dollars. Anyways, um, you know that book, book, good, good book. Any other thoughts about book? No. Cool. 